The symbol of the festival of Rosh Hashanah is the shofar, the ram's horn. And that really has become the symbol because when the Bible speaks of Rosh Hashanah, the first of the year, the anniversary of the creation of the human being, and therefore the anniversary of the creation of the world, the Bible refers to that day as Yom Truah Yelachem, a day of the broken staccato sound of the shofar. Shall this be for you? There's a difference of opinion amongst the rabbis of the Talmud as to what precisely that broken staccato sound is. Is it Yinuchei Gonach? A sigh? Do, do, do. Or is it Yelele Yalil? A wailing sob? And the obvious question must be why on our holiday and anniversary of the creation of the world is the symbol a broken staccato sound of the ram's horn? It's very strange. And that's really what the Hebrew truah means the root word is roa, reish vav ayin, which means broken down, about to collapse. What's the secret? And if we are crying and sobbing and wailing and sighing on our anniversary of the day of creation, how come this is a holiday? And Rosh Hashanah is a festival. The New Year's for us is a festival. The secret is as follows. Judaism understands that in large me- measure this world is a veil of tears. It's an unfair world. It's a world of much tragedy and ultimately a world of death. From that perspective, our immediate response to this day the world was created is ooh, 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 sighs and sobs. There is, however, one other reference to the shofar. Indeed, the very word shofar, ram's horn, means beauty because the horn of the ram is the beauty of the ram. And there's another portion of the Bible. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 25, and especially verse 9, And the Bible there speaks about the Jubilee year, every 50th year. There were seven sabbaticals, the end of seven years. The seventh year was a land, a year in which all land would lie fallow. The land would rest and the people would rest. And then after those seven cycles of seven years, the 50th year was the Jubilee when all servants would be returned, made free. When all purchased lands in Israel would go back to their original owners. When all debts would be rescinded. When freedom would be declared throughout the land. That's what's written on the Liberty Bell. And it comes from Leviticus 25. And on this 50th year, Chapter 25, verse 9. And you shall pass through the shofar, the ram's horn, and it shall make a broken sound 
on the seventh month, on the tenth day, Yom Kippur. Once again, you shall pass through the shofar, the ram's horn, in all of your lands. So what it meant was as follows. The shofar is a jubilant sound. An exultant sound. A victorious sound. Do Success! And what the Bible is telling us is that God gave us a story in progress. God gave us an imperfect world, an unfair world in many cases, and a world with much sickness and violence and ultimately death. But we created in God's image must perfect that world in the kingship of God. Hence, when the anniversary of the creation of the world comes, it begins with the broken sighs and sounds and sobs. But alongside of them is the exultant, jubilant sound of the jubilee year, of the 50th year. And to every broken sound, there are always two twice the length, jubilant sounds. Rosh Hashanah tells us that there's a world that God made. He has a plan for it. We are His partners to perfect it. It's difficult for us to do, but we can and must do it, and we shall succeed eventually. And so, we sound the broken sounds. Double the jubilant sounds. And Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year's, is a jubilant, rejoicing festival. Because we know that God would not have created the world for nothing. That it's not a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying emptiness we will be able to take ourselves in hand and to perfect this imperfect world. And the ultimate sound of the shofar is the jubilant tikiyah, the sound of rejoicing, the sound of success, successful perfection of an imperfect world. May we all have a very pleasant year.